100 years of Mitsubishi, eight of the brand's greatest cars driven. In 2017 Mitsubishi marked its 100th birthday, so we joined in the party by trying out some of the brand's classic motors. The motor industry is steeped in heritage and history, and companies are falling over each other to celebrate anniversaries to help sell new models, particularly the high-end car makers. But only a handful can say, proudly, that they've been building cars for 100 years, and Mitsubishi became part of that exclusive group this year. Although the Japanese manufacturer began building cars in 1917, with the Model A being its first car, it wasn't until 1974 when UK buyers could get their hands on a Mitsubishi, when the Colt car company arrived. It later rebranded to match the worldwide Mitsubishi name, and during the following decades the firm brought some true motoring icons to British shores. We drove eight of the best to celebrate the brand's special birthday this year. One of the first cars British buyers saw from the mark was the Colt Lancer, and it's easy to see why UK drivers were won over by this unfamiliar model. It's tiny from the outside but very spacious once you get inside, and even today it remains simple to drive as well. The two-door is genuine fun, with a large, thin-rimmed steering wheel and a surprisingly slick manual gearbox. The Lancer is no performance car, but the 1.4-liter four-cylinder petrol engine is strong enough. For its time, its 92 bhp made it responsive and it feels like it could keep up with a modern city car in a straight line. It feels very similar in nature to the four-door Golan, which also has a 70s charm to the way it drives. It's much softer than the Lancer, and feels a bit more upmarket inside as well. With its white seat covers and leather red door cards, the upholstery has the feel of the Japanese taxi, and the small, neat dials and spacious interior are among its most pleasing features. Like the Lancer, though, it's not great to drive by today's standards, but it does have bags of old-school charisma. Another model imported by Mitsubishi Motors UK in the 70s was the Jeep CJ3B Type 27. It's a version of the all-American release Jeep that was built by the brand under license in 1979, and officially imported by Mitsubishi Motors UK. This car was recently restored, and it's a wonderful example, the paintwork and exposed engineering are immaculate, and it drives smoothly and easily as well. The 4-speed manual gearbox has a long throw, but it's precise, and the 2.6-liter 4-cylinder petrol engine is to worky and responsive. There are two front seats and two more that face inwards and the rear, and, thanks to four-wheel drive and the low-range gearbox, there's plenty of potential for serious off-roading. While Mitsubishi's 70s models were fun to drive, the brand is better known in the UK for its performance cars, and the 1988 Starion wide body is a perfect example of where that reputation came from. Its turbocharged four-cylinder made it the fastest 2.0-liter car on the market in its day, with a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of just 7.1 seconds. That was very fast back then, and even today the Starion feels like a quick car. With 178 bhp and weighing 1,220 kilograms, the two-door coupe is surprisingly keen, and, despite being turbocharged, it likes to be revved as well. The steering is a bit slow, and that means you have to work hard to keep the steering on the right line through a corner, but the chassis feels sweet and there is an agility that you wouldn't expect just from looking at it. With 276 bhp and four-wheel drive, the Mackinnon goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.4 seconds. Yet its engine is so much more engaging and exciting than many modern turbo units, revving quickly and sweetly, while the manual box is superb. It has a heavy action like the 3000 GT, but it's more precise. The later Lancer of 09 Mr. FQ360 is clearly a direct relation, because it still features the same basic layout, a turbocharged 366 bhp 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine, four-wheel drive and a rewarding chassis. It's even faster than the Evo Vi, taking just 4.1 seconds to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour. The sharp responses, sweet manual transmission and incredible performance mean the Evo 9 is really great fun and leaves modern four-wheel drive pod hatches trailing. We suspect it would be faster down a tight B road as well, thanks to its more confidence-inspiring feel. It's a great way for us to finish, a real highlight of Mitsubishi's century. Which has been your favorite Mitsubishi? Let us know in the comments below.